We are all a sum of memories and experience shaping who we are. Sure, genetics play a part, and if you're so inclined, perhaps something greater, but we are each a product of our own lives. So what happens when you cram another seven or eight lifetimes worth into your mind from an entirely different set of people? That's where you get the trill. Hello, I'm Rick, and today the Index is looking into the Star Trek race with a unique adaptation. The most fascinating feature of the Trill has to be their efficiency at maintaining public transport. Their fastidious devotion to a structure- I'm joking, of course. You can't talk about the Trill without mentioning their symbiotic relationship with their homeworld's other intelligent life. This relationship has shaped many facets of their culture for millennia. Trill, or Trillius Prime, is home to 650 million Trill and 11 million symbionts. The planet is similar to Earth in terms of environment, but has an expansive cave network that houses a number of underground rivers and interconnected lakes. This vast cave system lends itself to easy access to mining, leading to no shortage of materials. The capital of Trill is Liren Menev, where the Symbiosis Commission and Senate offices reside, more on them later. The Trill themselves are a humanoid species that are remarkably similar to humans in many ways, at least the humans of the 24th century. Their cultural development in the galactic scene was incredibly rapid when compared to other species, with the Trill being Federation president only a few years after their admittance. The earliest contact with extraterrestrial life that they had was with the discovery of subspace communications of a limited fashion, and their interception of other cultures' background noise. By this time, the Trills had already developed a unified planetary government, based on a senate of representatives of different institutions. Spurred on by this discovery, they eventually developed their own warp program and were contacted by the Vulcans, as per Vulcan First Contact protocols. From then on, the Trill continued to develop their technology until the United Federation of Planets offered them membership. Interestingly enough, the Trill took a very long time to decide whether or not to join, and only accepted membership once they'd verified the claims of the Federation to be in line with their own morals and principles of cooperation and development. Their government tends to try to remain neutral in many external affairs, not wanting to draw too much attention, which earns them a reputation as mediators and ambassadors. After joining in 2285, they proved to be a model partner species whose technological developments contributed extensively, especially in matters of propulsion, and continued to pioneer techniques such as the generation of artificial wormholes, though for the longest time they continued to remain impartial in the face of many Federation affairs. As it may be clear by now, the Trill Society is one of intellectual pursuits, and the Science Ministry is a respected institution throughout the Federation. The direction of their development was in no small way influenced by the symbionts, the other native intelligence on their planet. It's unknown how the symbionts were first discovered, whether it was joint evolution or a parasitic relation turned beneficial, or even two separate species that discovered symbiosis by chance, but it has always been the way for a Trill host to join with a symbiont to create a shared experience. The near-foot-long slug-like creature has a life cycle all of its own. To begin with, they hatch from eggs in the pools of Makala, where they grow to their initial size. They are little more than brains attached to a swimming tail, are genderless, and absorb nutrition through their skin. They communicate by electrical discharge, and despite their appearance, they are sentient and have a name. Seth, Odan, Dax, Khan, for example. Once implanted into a Trill's abdomen, over a 93-hour period, they bind their tail to the host's nervous system, and the two minds begin to function as one through a neurotransmitter called isoboramine. The host's last name is then replaced with the name of the symbiont. Symbolically, it shows the importance of the joining, and the changes that the host will now undergo. The symbiotic exchange is that the symbionts get to experience everything that the host does, and the host has access to the experience and memories of the symbiont. This is because the little swimmers retain the memories, personality, and if you like, the essence of every host it has bonded with. This means that each symbiont's personality is therefore a mixture of these traits, loves, fears, joys, and neuroses. The host will integrate these experiences into his or her own, until to them at least, it seems there is no difference between the lives. Though the current host's personality remains dominant, 
they will refer to the experiences of past lives as their own, with even mannerisms, skills and habits carrying over. The rite of emergence allows a former host's personality to take a more dominant role over that of the current host, and the rite of closure, Ziantara, allows for a joined trill to meet former hosts and learn from their personality as it's overlaid temporarily on another person. A symbiont can be joined many times with no ill effect, but once bonded, neither can survive without the other. In a way, once joined, a trill will live on in some form, with their life preserved in the symbiont. Some sources say that once a symbiont has learned enough, usually this takes hundreds of years, they become unjoinable on their own and seek to return to the pools from where they were born. Returning to the water, they spend the remainder of their life in the depths, growing in size and tending to the older symbionts, called the annuated, 20,000 year old symbionts who absorb the experiences of all the younger ones on their return. But the trill's protective and secretive nature surrounding the symbionts leaves these stories unverified. If this is true, this may be the source for the ancient trill religious beliefs in Macrel Dur an afterlife of memories, where all life ends up in a unified mind. The Symbiosis Commission oversees the applications for joining initiates and screens them thoroughly, medically and psychologically for three years. During this time the initiates also undergo training to prepare them for the day that they're joined, as the influx of memories can prove overwhelming. At any time during the training, an initiate can be dropped, and most will. There are several thousand applicants and only 300 to 500 symbionts available per year. Naturally this leads the commission to become very selective in their criteria and even circulation of the rumour that biologically only one out of a thousand trills could be joined, when in fact it's closer to half the populace. Alongside the commission there are the guardians, unjoined trill who look after the symbionts in their natural environments, maintaining their climate, treating the ill or injured and so on. As the symbionts themselves retain the personality of all they've joined with, violent tendencies are often a case for dismissal as a candidate. This means that the majority of joined trills end up being level-headed, composed and moral individuals, with the advantage of being a joined trill, previous lifetimes of knowledge and experience these individuals often rise in rank and power to greater positions, with many in the Trill Senate being hosts. It's no surprise then that their culture is one of peace, with very few civil wars ever recorded through the fear of tainting the symbionts, literally and morally. The longevity of a symbiont and their scarcity leads them to be far more important than the host, so if it comes down to a choice of saving the host or the symbiont, they will often choose the latter not even risking certain procedures that may endanger the creature. The hosts are often described as merely another link in the chain, with the description of the host-symbiont relation described as the balance. The purpose of joining is to allow the symbionts to experience and grow as an individual, providing a richer life for the symbiont and, through the transfer of memories, the host too. Therefore, joined individuals are encouraged to seek out new experiences, like a vocation and destinations, to learn. There are also rules that forbid a joined trill from acting on a previous life's responsibilities, such as debts, oaths, and even family. This can be especially hard for a joined trill, one of the reasons for the initiate's extensive training, I'm sure. And while not all are enforced by law, Reassociation with former loved ones is forbidden and punished by exile. This is seen as a necessary deterrent, otherwise the symbiont may be forever beholden to their emotions or debts and never move on. Plus, the emotional distress and strain produced from trying to reassimilate a new individual into a perceived family can be problematic. When two joined trill become involved, they do so only for the duration of the host's life, and when the symbiont is passed on, that new individual often distances themselves from the previous attachments. However, general friendships are permitted to be retained. The Trill themselves would not be who they are without this symbiosis. 
Not all trill are joined, in fact the majority are not, but every trill has been affected by the joining of the two species. The very culture of the trill owes its existence to their union, from the drive for peace to their desire to cultivate this in others. The importance of the symbionts in their culture is likely the reason that their existence was so long kept secret from the general public, even after joining the Federation. But one thing is for certain, a trill, joined or not, is the product of a culture whose ideals line up with the Federation's to a T. Well, from their point of view, it's the Federation that has to measure up to their standards as a people. And you can't say that about many races in Star Trek. Thanks for listening, and as usual, the voting for the next culture can be picked from the comments below, with either another peaceful race, the Ood of Doctor Who, or the lumbering monotone Elcor of Mass Effect. Thanks again for watching, and remember, the Trill have always had spots. I don't know what you're talking about. Ridges? I, I see no ridges. That never happened. Goodbye.